Hi everyone, this is Ella Thera, and this is a video that's going to take you through how to make your very own Sailor Moon paper art shadow box. When you are done, you're going to have a project that looks a little something like this. Before we get started, I'm going to go through the materials that we're going to use along with all the paper products in order to make and craft this box. Um, so first of all, you want to have some glue on hand because we are going to be working with glue. I've been using Elmer School Glue. Um, pretty much any glue that you have on hand is going to work, so whatever you got, give it a shot. Um, you're also going to need something to put your glue in. So I've been using a little plastic tray. It's just a piece of plastic that I got from some random thing I bought at the store, um, just kept it. So I've been putting my glue inside this tray to work with. I also have two different tools that I've been using to spread glue with. One of them is just a plain old toothpick. So it helps to work um, with a toothpick for some of the finer details when you're gluing, because of the nice pointy tip. And then the other piece is just a piece of cardboard. What I did was I just cut this off of some random thing that I bought again, and um, I've been using this to spread. It works a lot more easily if you're trying to spread over a greater area to use something that's a bit thicker. Um, but you can certainly use anything that you have on hand that helps you to spread glue. It doesn't really matter what it is. I've just found that these tools work for me. Um, we'll also need to have a couple of other things on hand as well. So scissors in the event that you need to trim something. And if you find that you have difficulty working with some of the smaller pieces, you can also use some tweezers to help you position them just where you want them to be for your box. And last but not least, we're going to work with some adhesives as well. So these are some little foam dots. You can see that they have a little bit of depth to them. And that's what allows us to make all of our projects have a 3D aspect to them. Um, so we'll be using them to add depth to our 2D work and they pop off real easily, just like this. So we'll be using a bunch of them to add depth. I hope that you find this video to be instructional and I look forward to seeing what you have when you're all done. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start by first taking the pieces out of our bag. There's a lot of little ones in this kit, so be sure that you're very careful when you're taking them out that you don't lose any of them. I'm just going to pull a clump out all at once and then go back in for the rest. Let's see if there's any on the back side. Doesn't look to be. Okay, and if you are wondering how to get the background out of your bag, there's a trick to it. You can actually just fold it, or bend it over, and then it'll just pull right out. So we will set the um, background aside for now as we're going to start working with the other pieces. The first thing that we're going to do is just assemble all the pieces without doing any gluing and without using any of the adhesives so that you can see how it's going to lay itself out. So let's first pull apart some of these different pieces by color. So we have the body, the head. The head fits right on top here. And this very strange looking piece, which actually happens to be her arms. That's going to go behind her body, right about here. Let's also find all of the white pieces next. 
So there are two boots. Part of her skirt. Her top. And her boobs. And she has two arms, but there's actually three pieces for it. That's one arm. And her other arm is making a peace sign. So the bottom layer has her two fingers out. And then the other three are layered on top and it'll look something like this. So these pieces are going to go on her as such. For the feet, if you're having difficulty telling which is which, you can just follow the shape of her leg and that will help you decide which one goes on which foot. Her two um, pieces for her one hand are going to go right in front of her head like this. So she's actually making the peace sign right in front of her face. And then her other arm is going to be angled and will be actually resting on her, oops, I have it the wrong way, there we go. It'll be resting on her hip once we put her skirt on. And speaking of the skirt, let's actually do that one next. So there's two layers to the skirt. There's a, um, a solid piece, and then the piece that goes on top of it that has um, a ton of lines cut into it for the pleats in her skirt. And the way it goes on her body, Actually this way. And then we put the final white piece on top. It's gonna hide where they join together. The last blue piece is part of her sailor uniform, so it'll go up here and we'll have the, the blue piece in the center will actually go behind her neck. So we can do the red pieces next. So there's again two boots. They go directly on top of the white ones, so just match up the shape Just like that. Her sailor uniform also has a bow on top of it and there's two pieces to the bow. The lower part, oops, sticking to my fingers today. The lower part and the upper part. And they are going to cover where um, the uh, white and blue pieces join here. We have a few more tiny red pieces. Let's see if I can pull them all out here. There's four pieces that go on the sleeves, right at her elbows. So there's two solid ones, and two that have lines cut into them. So we're gonna use a solid, followed by a line on top of it here, and then do the same thing again here.
So the solid will go down first, followed by the cut piece. And then we will do the same thing again on her other side. On top here. And again. Now we're down to three red pieces. This piece is actually the collar in the front on her neck. So it'll go somewhere about right here. And the last two red pieces go in the center of her two dongo. These two circles in yellow are going to have the two final red pieces on them. And if you watch the English dub version, they call these her meatballs. So these will actually hide behind her head. Peeking out. We have two orange pieces. One is going to go on her ribbon. So this is meant to be the, her little brooch. And the last one goes on her crown of her head. So this is her tiara. Her hair has several layers to it. We're going to put this piece of her head down first, followed by all of her bangs. And the last piece is her hair, which is going to go behind her head. It'll sit something like this behind her head. Let's compare how this looks to a finished piece. So now that we see what Sailor Moon is going to look like once she's assembled, we're gonna go ahead and start putting the pieces together. And the first thing we're going to do is gluing a lot of the details. So go ahead and get out your glue and your little tray. And we're first going to start with her boots. So what we want to do is we want to glue the red piece onto the white piece. And you'll see that there'll be a little bit of white that sticks out at the top. Once you have your piece glued, you can press down to make sure that it stays. And do the same thing with the other boot. Next, we're going to put the brooch on her ribbon and the two red pieces onto her dongo. 
I'm going to switch to my toothpick because these are slightly smaller pieces and it's a little bit easier to work with my toothpick to glue them down. They almost look like little eyes. I'm gonna move aside some of these pieces here so that we can see what we're doing with the rest. We're going to next glue her collar on to her neck. So be positioned right about here. Not as crooked though. Let's glue the two pieces of her one arm together. The ones giving the peace sign. So these two pieces. And when you glue them, I want you to glue them only up until her wrist because we want to be able to make her um, fist pop out. And we'll show you how to do that in a second. So only apply the glue until her wrist. While we wait for that to dry, let's go ahead and put the tiara on her head. position it so that it's almost halfway down this side from the uh, half circle. So if this is the half circle, I would say have the bottom tip about halfway down, the bottom of the tiara. And what we'll do on the top half is glue her hair down and it's going to stick out a little bit over the top. So this piece of hair will be something like this. And sticks out over the top of her head. So go ahead and glue her piece of hair down there too. Okay, next we're gonna take part of her sailor uniform. I'm gonna take this piece. And you can see how the middle is not actually joined together at the top. I want you to take and fold the two tabs in the middle back. Because what we're going to do is put those on the back side of her neck. Just like this. Lift up her body. I'm going to put this behind her neck. And we are going to glue the tabs on the back of her neck. It's 
so I put some glue back there and now I'm just pressing down And it looks like the fabric is rising off of her shoulders. Now these should be dry so we can go ahead and glue her boots onto her feet. probably feels a little stiff because there's two pieces of uh, paper instead of one. So again, just line up where you see the shape of her leg, her little ankle bones, press it down. And do the same thing with her other leg. Okay, so now we're going to come back to her one arm and we will be gluing it onto her elbow. You should be able to line up the end here with the edges of her elbow. It looks something like this in terms of how it's angled. So it looks like the peace sign she's making is about halfway up her face. There will be some overlap between your white piece and the piece underneath, because that's where we're going to glue. So the glue will go around this area here. And her other arm, as we said before, is going to be angled as if it's on her skirt. So we want it to be something like this. So you will put the glue right here. I'm going to change the angle a little bit, make it angle more in. There we go. Now we can put her little red sleeves on her elbows and it's going to cover up where the pieces join. So you want to use the solid piece first.
and do the same thing on the other side. All right, we have two more sleeves that we're going to glue on, but before we do that, I want us to do a little bit of bending and folding on them. It's gonna make them pop out a little bit more. So it has two slits in the sleeve. And what I want you to do is use those slits to make it look like it's little separate pieces of her sleeve. So if you actually bend the end of this, so right now it's flat, we're going to bend the end of it. It's going to look more three-dimensional. If you find it hard to work with pieces this small, you can use a pair of needle nose tweezers. And now I'm going to bend the very tip of it the opposite way. The tip is where we're going to glue it on. So the tip is the only place, so this tip right here, that is going to be in contact with the other paper pieces. So you can see how it comes away. And we're going to do the same thing with the other sleeve. So again, it's flat right now. We're gonna fold the edges. And then we are going to bend the tip the opposite way. That makes it stand out further from the rest of her body. And we're just going to glue the tip down to her sleeve. This piece looks really weird not being attached to the rest of her. <laughs> okay, we're pretty much done with gluing at this point. What we're going to move on to next is using the foam adhesives. So I'm gonna set our glue aside. We're going to be working with these. These are just little sticky dots, double-sided sticky. Uh, the side facing the camera right now has little circles cut out of it. It's the front side. And then the back side doesn't have them punched the whole way through. These are essentially spacers and we use them to add depth so that it's gonna make things pop out. So we're first going to work with her bust. Let's see if I can line this up first. The curve of her body. This is the way that you want to have her bust facing. So one of the ends is more angular. 
this piece right here is more angular. You want that on the right side. The piece that's a little more curved, it's gonna be facing left side. Okay. And we're going to layer her bust on top of that. So in order to use the spacers, what we are going to do is put one foam dot right here and another one right here to lift her bust from her body. So I'm gonna flip this over so we can add the dots to it. All you need to do to use these dots is to peel off the backing from the front side. You can peel it out just like this. Press it down. You can also wait to take the backing off until you've placed it on the object you're working with. So if I just peel the whole thing out, right now it's sticky on the bottom and not on the top. Press that down. You always want to press down to make sure it has a chance to adhere. And then I will peel away the covering. So now it's sticky on both of the pieces. And we'll just set that right on top, line up exactly the uh, edges here. Pressing down again. And you can see now how it pops away from the rest of her uniform. I'm going to flip this piece over now, and we're going to add three dots to the back. One, two, both of these right on top of the other dots, three. Now we're going to do a little bit of bending before we add this piece onto her body. So her shoulder sleeves up here again have some slits and we want to angle them so that they look like they're coming over her shoulders. Right now it's flat so if we were to just put it on here it looks fairly flat. So we want to curve them towards her shoulders. So I'm just going to bend them. Just like this. Don't be afraid when you're applying pressure. So now when we place it on her, it looks like they're going over her shoulders. So go ahead and peel the backing off all three of your sticky pieces because we're going to put this on her body next. And let's first lift up part of her uniform so that doesn't get in the way. Then we're gonna place her uh, uniform on top. Once you have it in the position that looks right, press down on all of the adhesives. And then we can push the front of her uniform back down. So now it looks like it's popping out of her body. And that's just what we want. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna work with the skirt next. The skirt is actually going to have uh, multiple layers of dots on it. So your skirt will be facing this way. It's a little bit easier to see. This is about the positioning that we're going to have of the skirt, but it's going to be two layers up. And what we're going to do is put two dots back to back on this side right here, over top of this leg, and again right here over top of this leg. So in order to use two dots together, you can peel the backing off your first one, so it's sticky and then just pull out your second one completely. Put it on top of the other one and press down. That way you know they're adhering to each other. And you can tell if I turn this that it's twice as thick. So peel the whole thing out, flipping my skirt over, put it on the back side, and press down. You want it about halfway between the center and the end. The very end doesn't actually um, go over her leg, it extends out. So you want to have the dot close enough to the center that you're actually going to be putting the foam adhesive onto her leg. And go ahead and repeat the same exercise and put two dots here. Okay, now we're going to work with the top of her skirt. And first of all, you should make sure that it looks like this, turned this way, if you were to put it on her body. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the pleats come out from her body. So along this edge here, it's solid. This edge is solid. What we want to do is we want to bend the pleats up so that they're coming away from the solid piece. So right now everything is angled in the same plane that I'm holding my toothpick. And we're going to take the pleats and raise them up like this. So if you hold on to the solid end, just bend everything up. Then it's going to come away going to look like the pleats are popping out towards you. Next we're going to take each of those little pleats and we are going to bend them into a semicircle. So right now even though they're raised away from her body, they're still all flat. And we want to make them more interesting. We want to give them some angle to it. So if we bend them like that, it's going to give a little bit of an arc to the end. So the way that you can bend them to have this little arc is to have the center of your finger in the center of a pleat. So this finger, my index finger, in the center of the pleat. And then I'm using, for my other hand, my index finger and my thumb to just press against it. So basically I'm using my thumb, or my uh, index finger as the object that I'm curling these pleats around. 
And go ahead and do that for all of the pleats in the skirt. And don't go crazy feeling like they aren't bending the way you want them to. Just getting a little bit of a curl in there is fine. You're just trying to make it look more 3D and it's gonna capture the shadows and the lighting differently just by bending it. If you think you, they, they look too flat, then you can always bend them a little bit further. So this is what my piece looks like now. And there's one last thing we're going to do with these pleats. Pleats generally have um, one side resting underneath the other. So what we wanna do is now twist the pleats. So by that, I mean, right now I have this in my hand. I'm going to turn this clockwise. And then I'm gonna turn the next one clockwise. And again, and now, just from those three that I angled, there's a shadow being cast right here. I've added a little bit more light so we can see for the rest of this where the shadows are going to fall a bit more easily. Um, but we're going to take the skirt, the top piece of the skirt, and we're going to glue it to the bottom piece just along the top edge. That way all of the pleats are going to stand out away from her body. So all you need to do is line up the top edges once you have your glue on the skirt. And then press it down with your fingers or your tweezers if you prefer. So when you're done, the skirt will look something like this. And then we're going to head and glue, going to go ahead and glue this top layer onto her skirt. Lines up like this. While we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to put the dongo on her head. So these two circles. I'm going to go about like this on her. So you want to put a little dab of glue right about here 
on the back side. You want to make sure that your glue has time to dry on these because there's only a small surface area where it's going to connect to the other pieces. Okay, let's jump over to the ribbon now. So we have the top half. The glue is most certainly dry on this by now. And the bottom half. We're gonna do some bending and folding before we put these two pieces together. So we wanna make the pieces of the ribbon pop towards you. So if you put your thumb in the middle where the brooch is, you can fold the sides of your ribbon up. And then you can also bend them and curl them around your finger to arc them. So go ahead and do that to both sides. With the bottom piece of the ribbon, we will be attaching it to the top piece right here. So we can make the ends of the ribbon pop out. So if you hold on to the section that's going to be glued down, then you can pull the ends of the ribbon forward and again do some bending, curling. like that. Now for the next piece we're going to use some scissors to actually attach these two pieces of ribbon together. And the reason is the surface area that we're going to connect at the top here. It's more of a long rectangular shape than it is a circle. And the circles are too big. We don't want the circles to show. So you're going to just use some scissors and snip a piece of the adhesive. Cut a little section like this. And that's what we will use to join the two pieces together. So once you have your piece snipped out, you can peel the backing off of one side, put it on the bottom half of your ribbon, press down firmly, remove the top half, and put the top half of your ribbon on. Now the completed ribbon is going to go right about here. It's going to cover right where the ends of the blue piece are, so right here. And if we use a generous amount of glue there, all of the glue will be hidden and we'll make sure that everything stays.
I'm holding it in place to make sure that it's going to stay. So we're gonna go ahead and let that dry. And now let's uh, skip back up to her skirt. This should be dry by now too. If we peel the backing off these two pieces, we can then stick it back onto her body right about here. Basically, you want to have it so that the skirt is two layers up from her body and uh, her chest piece is only one layer up. And you don't want it down here where you're going to see the pieces join. This uh, top white piece should cover the ends of her chest piece and actually be a little bit higher than that so there's a little bit of overlap. It'll look like that. So go ahead and take the back off. So I ended up running out of space in my memory card, so I apologize that the last piece just got cut off. But what I'm gonna do is just walk through for the last few pieces where you need to put the foam adhesive and also how to make the hair so that when you're done, the fully assembled box will look like this. For the arms, we're going to use two foam dots, one here and one here. And these will hide behind uh, her body. So when you apply her hands, they're going to be positioned behind her uh, shoulder area right about where I'm holding it above the completed piece. For her bangs, before we put any adhesive behind them, we want to bend her bangs down. So just work your way around the edge and curl the bangs under a little bit. So you can see the difference between the half that I have curled and the half that is straight. You want to do that to all the bangs, so go ahead and do that the whole way around. Once you have that done, we're actually going to use our scissors and cut two small rectangular pieces of the adhesive. And we're going to place them here and here. So if you're wondering about the size that we could use, this is about the size that you could place on both sides. And then once you have the adhesive on both sides, you wanna position it so that her bangs are going to cover the other yellow piece in the forefront, so her other hair. So it's gonna hide where that joins with the body. And it's going to have the, uh, the bangs in the front here are going to go over top of her tiara. And the last step before we put her all to, uh, together on her background is to do the hair. And I have to say, this is probably the trickiest part to do after the, um, after the skirt, just because there is so much folding involved. So what we're going to do is we're going to be bending this section here on both sides of her hair. And we'll do this a couple times. So we're going to bend this, then do it again. And if we need to, we'll do it a third time. But basically each time you do it, you're going to um, curl it a little bit more. So just start by pinching your way along. We'll do one side so you can see what that looks like and then we'll do the other side. So it's just a little bit curled. Do it again. 
Don't be afraid to get aggressive with your bending here. Now you can see how that looks even more bent. The next time we do this, I'm going to try to actually just wrap the paper around itself and use the paper to help fold it. So I'm going to make a little circle. Basically like this. And just keep rolling it. And then I'm going to hold it in place here. It's going to have it um, take this shape. Now you can see how, uh, how different that looks. We also want her curls to pop out. So right now it's all sitting on top of each other. So if we take the very tip of it and we pull it this way, it's going to make it pop out. So I'm going to hold on the end here, hold on here, and just pull like this. And that makes it pull out. If you want it to be curly, more curly, you can uh, continue to wrap it around until you get the desired shape of the hair and then rinse and repeat, doing the same thing on the other side. So again, you start by bending the tip. Down to here. Go back and bend again. And then you can curl the hair on itself. So roll it. And wrap it around itself. And hold it in place so that it takes the shape. And then hold on the end. Pull it towards the center. And then we have our curls. So to attach this to her body, you're just gonna put glue on this section here and put it behind her head. And you want it to line up so that it looks like the ponytails are coming out of her donko at the top. So you can see it looks like they're coming out from behind. Now when it comes to attaching it to your background, we're going to put foam dots in three places. One on each of the feet right about here and here. And then four dots stacked on top of each other behind the middle of Sailor Moon's head, right about here. And then once you're ready to attach it, you can make any sort of final adjustments that you want. So for example, the, uh, the top of her hair right now, what we've done so far is all flat. You could add some bends and folds to that to make it pop out more. Or pinch the edges of her legs so that it gives them a little more of a rounded effect on the end. Or anything else that you think would add detail to it. And then that's it, you're all done.